things are going okay. How long does it usually take you to set up one of these then? <laughs> We've never done it before. Oh, right. <laughs> Hi, my name is Miriam Fox and I've been mostly known as Yoga Fox Studio for teaching yoga over 25 years and only just under two years ago I, when I was on holiday in Spain I just literally started doodling with little permanent marker pens on stones. I'm not trained as an artist, I didn't go to any art classes so I started doing little silhouettes for fun and giving them to people that were walking their dogs on the beach then little cars and all sorts so people started asking me what I actually do their dog or cat portrait on a stone which I did so then I started doing some pencil drawings so just in my first pencil drawing actually was one of my sons so uh, I didn't know what angle I was going and I was just having fun drawing on stones then doing pencil drawings and then in November before Christmas I was asked if I would draw the four courts. So then that got me into when I did my first building drawing that I did a print and learned all about different types of print and gicle print. So just went from strength to strength. I just kept drawing my old buildings ever since and people commissioned me to draw. So from no experience of drawing, from teaching yoga for 25 years to be surrounded by all my art. And so it's in everybody you know everybody should try it so i found where i'm happy drawing archival old buildings and i come out here every morning and i have my little sketch my next plan is hatch castle and i'll just sit here with all my little ink pens drawing of my artwork here in third place at the Market Square Dundalk. This seems to be a perfect place for me to display my drawings of Dundalk because we are surrounded by most of the drawings I have done. We have the Maid of N, we have the courthouse, we have the town hall. So we're right in the centre, the heart of the town here at Market Square. This is a nice way to kickstart my exhibitions because I've got a few of them to celebrate our heritage. While this still runs here, I'm having one in the Dundalk Library and it's going to run from the 1st to the 25th of August. I'm having one in the Marsha Shopping Centre. Uh, Sean Farrell, the ma manager of the Marsha Shopping Centre, has kindly sponsored me the space. I'm also going to be displaying my work in RD Library. I had the idea of having a floating art exhibition window display. So the three windows will be displaying all my work and I created a system of hanging them um, for everybody in RD town to come and view their heritage that they have on their doorstep. Yeah, it's pretty hectic, but with my 25 years of yoga teaching, I just take one day at a time. No, no problem, <laughs> it's a breeze. <laughs> National Heritage Week which is from the 15th to the 23rd of August. National Heritage Week is about taking our awareness to the, the, our heritage on our doorstep and with that in mind I even created a map which you'll see down there and it's a map of County Louth. I based it from a 16th century archive drawing of a map 
and I plotted in all our places from County Loud and then I surrounded the map with about 22 of my Dundalk drawings and RD as well, there's a mixture on them. I'm very drawn to the old buildings because I find that they tell a story. So I just started to look around what was the oldest buildings and the most historic buildings and I began with the old library and then I went from the buildings themselves to some of our monuments. We have the Maid of Air, Kelly's Monument. So anything really that was quite historic and old but then I got drawn to what does this monument, what does this building represent. So I really got excited in learning the history. So I'd go to the archives, I'd find an old photo and then I would draw it from maybe it was a hundred years old, the photo in the archives and then learn all about the history. I'd often draw the picture first and then afterwards I was amazed at the history, so it was a bit backwards. When I walk around now or I go to visit anywhere, I can't even get to where I'm going because I'm, my head is spinning because I cannot believe all the historic buildings that we have in County Love and all the monuments. And it's as if my eyes are open for the first time. So I really get excited. I take photos now of a lot of the buildings myself and because I want them coming like a 3D angle or jumping out of you. I want to feel that the building is in your face. When I first drew the Key Street Railway Station, that led me on a whole railway journey and um, I got quite interested in where were the trains going to and then I realised that the people would get on the, the trains from Key Street Railway Station. They would gather children and um, everybody would come from the same street and they would get onto the train and their day trip was going out to Belorgan. I've drawn Belorgan railway station as well and this was their, their highlight, their day trip and to go to Jules's Quay, the, the station would, the train would stop at all the different railway stations and we've all this on our doorstep and yet sometimes we don't even stop there in a car. We've got such beautiful places around us but it's a pity because the railway we, we, we lost that connection of what we have close by instead we're looking to go further afield and I think with during the time of Covid and we're still in it and lockdown that we soon started to appreciate when we were let out as such in a very short five mile radius we started to appreciate Jules's Key Black Rock, things on our doorstep and the heritage on our doorstep. And I just want us to be aware of what we have in a very close-knit radius, County Louth, what we have here. sure a lot of you know me already. Uh, I'd just like to introduce Miriam Fox here who's done some terrific artwork uh, on, on the heritage of County Loud for the Heritage Week. Of course I'm a railway man myself, uh, it's in the blood who my, my uh, grandfather, my great grandfather was station master in Donegal and, and, and then my father was he worked on the railway there as well, and my uncle, his brother, uh, also. Uh, so I, I've, uh, I'm, I was a fifth generation on the railway. In the late 50s and 60s, railways didn't go down too well, and a lot of the buildings was demolished, and all sorts of stuff that, if we had them now, it would be lovely. But, uh, but it's grand to have this expedition here to look back on. The railway and Dundalk, it was very important, the railway and the works, they call it. In oh, Dundalk. the works was a big that thing, yeah. Uh, so we, we, they actually built steam trains, steam engines in Dundalk. In Dundalk, in the works. Time. And now we have to go to China and 
But Dundalk has there, they... great railway heritage. Oh, yes. But it's Dundalk. forgotten. So mm. I just wanted to bring it alive a little bit because it was a huge part, a huge employment in yeah. Dundalk, County Very much so, yeah. Yeah, it, and it's a big loss to the yeah. whole town. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Lenny, for coming along okay, to Mary. the opening of oh, this one here. We can't do yeah. that yet. <laughs> See that? I forgot. <laughs> During these exhibitions, it's amazing how I make friends with everybody on Facebook through my drawings. Mm. And then from my drawings, I make friends with all these people from a drawing. And then they're telling me about the history. So that's what's really nice about the exhibitions. You get to meet people that you're just friends with on Facebook. And so that was my first time meeting Lenny today, which is really nice. I suppose this is what people learn in art college and I'm sort of doing it backwards here teaching myself but this is really some experience learning all this so there we go now exhibition number two executed uh, all the preparation work um, paid off uh, days of planning and creating these hanging displays and then thank you to the the brains no not the brains <laughs> forget that bit and Thanks to my husband, Paul, here, who puts the muscle in to do the hard work for me. I create everything and then he has to make it, but he follows the orders good and I think we had a good success today. Yeah, good success, yeah. <laughs> well, he's still smiling anyway, so... She does most of the work in getting everything ready. Preparation I, I, I is the key. That, yeah. Preparation. Preparation is all I say all the time. So. I have everything prepared and so then we just he just follows the orders and everything's fine there's no arguments it's fine <laughs> if it goes wrong it's my fault because I didn't prepare properly but so this is uh, exhibition number two prepared and executed ready for day three tomorrow Dundalk library and exhibition number three to be executed there I shouldn't say executed actually it's not a good word <laughs> Exhibition, and we're today we are kindly being given this display that we can use as a part of display my historic drawings for Heritage Week, which is coming up soon. So, the the whole plan here is uh, again my keyword preparation. So I have my mood board that I call it. So I've created all this here, and I've planned all the ten display boards that we have and pre-planned because I'm always talking about pre-preparation and I've got all my drawings where they're going to plot nicely, all numbered, coordinated and hopefully you'll see that going up nice and easily and no complications at all and that's the secret of a good marriage between Mon Art and Paul Fox. <laughs> I told you before, Stephen, you know me now, preparation is the key. <laughs> and, and I'm even there, I have my newspaper article. And it's nice that people see that it's a 0 0.03 pen. And then they seem to have a bit more understanding how long it takes to draw these with that needle tip pen. So, I'll put that there for now. Yeah, well... It, don't zoom in there, because Paul, you know this is not the green off. That's not, you, you were just checking that out, yeah, <laughs> for size. <laughs> Paul, this is New Grange. That's New Grange, yeah. Yeah, get your numbers right. Get your card list, Paul. So I've learned an awful lot about Dundalk. It's lovely, sometimes people come to the exhibition and they're looking at the town hall, and there's an aunt of mine saying that many many years ago she was working behind that office window so it's, uh, there's a story to 
every picture. Uh, at the peak of COVID, I just thought I have to, I finished drawing New Grange and I thought I have to stop and maybe acknowledge and draw something to do with uh, safety and washing hands. And that's why Florence Nightingale has ended up, I know she's not uh, our national heritage in Ireland, but she's the world's uh, national L emblem, I think, because Florence Nightingale, her, she stands for washing hands and hygiene. And so that's why she's quite an important figure. Um, and I'm hoping to send little prints to many hospitals uh, I, I left one of them up in Drogheda Hospital just to say to the staff, you're doing fantastic. I left one in A&E and uh, to say they're doing very well. So that's Florence. The Green Hotel is one of your favourites. Um... I didn't know that. I've never <laughs> asked him. <laughs> and uh, Hatch Castle, very nice. Sorry, that's Ledger Castle. <laughs> Paul? <laughs> But it, that's the picture he likes. Okay. That's the picture I like, yes. And also the convent in an RD. Yes, this magnificent convent just recently sold. I lived in Stavanna for 25 years and RD was my local town to shop in. And I never knew that this convent was, this, this building, this Gothic, this building, was in RD, just up on a little hill. Never, never knew. Um, these two drawings are actually my favourites because I think they just represent Dundalk and uh, the, this is Lawless, it was a sweet shop. But when I was drawing it, I was, this picture is going back um, maybe the, towards that. 1900s. This was established in 1916. So I like to get the oldest photo that I can when I'm drawing it and often I find them in the archives here in the library. So in this old photo, um, in this little shop window, what used to be in it, because uh, you, need, you need a magnifying glass for my drawings, but all the detail is there. And I used to sell pipes you know the way you get pipes on the elastic cardboard. So you've got pipes and even children's little plastic guns um, and uh, all the, the holy water fonts. It was quite an eclectic li little shop. And then you, when I'm drawing it, you nearly feel like this door open inviting you in down this long corridor. And then the, the hairdressers, the, well, the barbers it was known as. And um, I believe it's still uh, being used as a barbers today. And then you've got, in the same street, Park Street, you've got uh, a beautiful building. You notice in the old drawings, you've got nice trees. The Dundalk town was mapped out beautiful with trees. We, we don't see these anymore now. But Russell's, uh, we know it as Russell's, the gin emporium now. There was Russell's and Co. And if you look, even in the window here, it was called the arch. And um, the, the clock, that clock is still the original clock there as well. But I love because you've got this beautiful, intricate metal railing. So a lot of, we've lost a lot of these things in uh, modern photos. So when I'm looking for something to draw, um, I like all the little intricate details and even all the tiling. People come in and remove all the tiles, which is very, very sad. exist today. This is Maxwell Terrace and these were demolished um, and they're out the, the Newry Road and there's the Lisdu and you turn down there then and you've got the Lisdu Colleges. So sometimes people request that I draw something that was their family home and so that's quite nice and, and then I get the history on that. archive picture, Le Ethine, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. This is the, so I fall in love with this boat, the ship, and 
I have an awful habit, I, I find an old photo I like, I draw it, and then as I'm drawing it, I'm thinking, I wonder what this is all about. And I do it backwards then, so then I start to find out the history, and then I realise that I'm drawing the, the Irish naval flagship, um, the, the P-31. So I'm so intrigued learning little bits of information, so I start to write down all the little bits of information that I have. So at the moment even, I've been driving the um, Irish Navy, uh, probably crazy sending messages because I've got my heart set on drawing La Deirdre. Mm -hmm. I done my yeah, SS Dundalk, and Dundalk, then I yeah. fell in love with this Irish oh, Naval. Oh, yeah. And the, the, yeah. the yeah. Irish Naval service, that's the flagship of the Irish yeah, Naval, yeah, yeah, and yeah. they found me in the archives. I have the Navy searching the archives for me. I messaged the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I message the Navy and they found Le Deirdre in the archives for me. Yeah? Because I've fallen in love with her, I want to draw her. And then I did tell them that, um, watch out because I hope I'll draw the whole fleet of eight. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I'll get on that Navy oh, ship yet. Oh, you will. A few sailors there. <laughs> um, ambulance tray. Ambulance, do you see that? Look at the hint there, there's ambulance signs for. Yeah. It's not the Laguna killer. Ambulance. Hello, Liam Gaynor is my name, Railway Heritage Society, and this is Margaret. Margaret Mallon, and mm. I'm from Dundalk Railway Heritage Society, and also we're members, I suppose, of the Loud Archaeological Society, Society and Dundalk, the Old Dundalk, Dundalk Society. So we're involved with a lot of that sort of stuff. Uh, just looking at some of the, the, the drawings here, they're absolutely fantastic. But, uh, this here is the Green Oral Tower, which um, unfortunately is demolished. Uh, got a tremendous history. Um, it was, there's only two lifts in the world that are booked by hydraulics. There's one here and one in New York. But that, that lift was taken out before it was demolished and it's out in Green Oak. And they hope someday to bring it back to life. Well, but, it's uh, still there. No, the lift is there, yeah. But uh, it was, uh, the port was opened by Lady Diana Spencer's grandfather. And there's a plaque in the wall out there. It's still there, the plaque. He, he opened it, the river line. And uh, me being a Dundalk fanatic, uh, the uh, first time the dog won the cup, 1932, the reception was held there. They went in the train to Green Oak Hotel for some unknown reason. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. But they did. But there's, there's the central cabin that was being in the railway. That was moved. But only for Brendan McQuaid, who was the station master at the time, he moved it onto the platform. But that was the central cabin on the main Dublin Belfast line. Yeah. He, Brendan was the station master at the time. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. he got it moved, um, I think it was CIE, they moved it That's by crane right. onto the platform. So it's preserved there, mm -hmm. and it's great to see it. Yeah. Lots of people, yeah. they just yeah. love that it's preserved. Not many of them are. I think it's so important, as far as the railway is concerned, um, about 2,000 people worked there. Nearly every household in Dundalk at one stage, their father or their grandfather worked there. So we want to keep it on for the children, especially. Absolutely. Absolutely. And to remember, you know, who worked there and it was such a vital part of Dundalk. And, and, and unfortunately, all the skills that were there, they were gone. Yeah. Br brass, there was brass foundry there. The poultry, there was, they did everything. Like, they we're just looking at the hospital train over here in the corner. It, it, was, it was built in the dark. The train was mm. reconditioned into, into a hospital train. So they're not operating theatre the whole lot on, on the train, but all built in the dark, uh, which is something to be proud of, like, you know. But it was World, World War I, yeah, World War I, yeah. It was totally kitted out as a hospital. There were mm. uh, beds Bunk and beds, everything. beds, the whole lot, yeah. yeah, operating theatre. Yeah, on and that Unfortunately, at that time, they had the officers in one section and the, the ordinary soldiers were in another section. That was the way things were, but uh, all built in the dark. It was bringing back um, prisoner or sorry, injured people from Europe, and they called a cove in Belfast, I think. Yeah, and to bring them in and to be going up to hospitals in Belfast, and there was a hospital here in the dark as well. Yeah, up, up at the old There's infirmary. photographs of um, the the patients sitting out on the lawn, I think, at, at, at in front from, of yeah. what is the grammar school mm -hmm. now. Grammar school now, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a fabulous building. It's mm -hmm. the old yeah, Louth Hospital. Yeah, yeah. It's all very diverse because she's done the railways, 
the religious buildings, the monuments, and shops. the old shops, shops which are yeah, really yeah, important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because now we've only got the shops. The main street is not what it was. So any old shops with the old signs, I mean, that's what the Dundalk Towns is yeah. trying to do at the moment, is bring back the centre of the town. It's very sad that we lost a lot of our, our old shop fronts were destroyed in modernising in the 60s. And instead of looking and trying to preserve these buildings, like Russell's, Mm. Hustler, like it would have been an absolute tragedy if anyone had to damage that. But we've lost so much. I admire her energy so much. She's yeah, thrown yeah. so much yeah, into it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's a wonderful artist. This is why it's important. The museum can only hold so much. Yeah. So it's, this is a different way of reminding people what we have mm -hmm. and what it would be to lose these things. Absolutely. Absolutely fantastic. You've really expanded on everything. It's great to see you bringing the old monuments and the areas back and to life. So you're not again. sick of looking at me up in the archives? No, I love seeing you talking about all the different pictures and the paintings. Yeah. And like this one here, this is the best example I think of bringing this one to life. Right, yes. Because everybody that comes in to the reference library looks at this map here. Oh, do they? They do. A lot of people would look at it because it's very prominent. Yeah. Well, this is great the way you take the whole county into consideration rather than just. Just and turned up, and yes. everybody just will have some kind of interest. I love lots of people coming in. I love having the chat with Mary, which is the most memorable, I think, <laughs> of anybody that puts displays on, because everyone will come in and say, talk to Mary, yeah. and to talk, to talk about each, like this, you have a story behind each Yes. One. And, you and they tell people. me the stories yeah. then. You engage yeah. with anybody that comes yeah. in, I think that's, they love coming yeah. in for the talk, even like the birth, just like that. Yes. This is day four, exhibition number four. I'm here in the Marshall Shopping Centre with the manager, Sean Fowler. And I just want to take this opportunity to thank you, Sean, for allowing me and sponsoring me this space to display and show people our national heritage that we have on our doorstep. And it's a beautiful space, so mm. I want to thank you yeah, for that. You're, you're very welcome, Mary. You're very welcome indeed. And just to put more emphasis on this, this is obviously in conjunction with the National Heritage Week, yeah, which I think is the 15th yeah, of August. Week, yes. And Miriam has very kindly offered to put on some of the fantastic artwork, which celebrates, as you can see, a lot of local uh, iconic in even industries and buildings, uh, not just in the dock, but in the, in the entire county. Yes, Am I right, Miriam? Yeah. Yes. But the ink pen can blend in with anything, doesn't it? You yeah. don't have to match a colour in the sitting room. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking from a woman's perspective. Yeah. There's no matching. Yeah. See it. Yeah. Good. We'd like to invite all, all, all of our customers to come and please please to take a viewing here. Yeah. Uh, Miriam will be here to answer any questions. Yeah, I'll be in and out. And I've done lovely little story cards. You might come in one day, have a little read another day, because you'll never get through 43. But all the little history cards and learn about the history on our doorstep. Us, yeah. So it's a, it's a great way to, to celebrate and to be involved in the National Heritage, yeah. to get a green Miriam, yes. public place. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was just lovely earlier on and there was little children coming past and they were looking at my, my drawings on the floor and it was just like, Mammy, Daddy, the green church, they were naming all the places and that's, that's all I want, it's lovely. I feel um, a little disappointed in some way because I have nothing to look forward to tomorrow, day five, <laughs> with Stephen. <laughs> but, um, so, so I feel like it's all gone very well. Nothing can prepare you for actually putting up your own exhibition. You really need to experience it. But there's always new problems come up. But I'm lucky I have my right-hand man here, and when a problem occurs, 
I get Mr. Fix It to get the solution. <laughs> yeah, I love the communication, and um, I just love when people come over and they're fascinated. And already I had two people and that are just like myself, never went to art classes and just uh, draw themselves for a little bit of fun. So I hope that I encourage children, adults, every age group. So I think a four exhibitions might be a little bit too much for some people yeah, to take so, on. Yeah, I wouldn't do it again. I'd one week. Well, well, I would, and I'd probably do more. <laughs> but I'm just saying for the general people starting up, I just wouldn't recommend four at the one time. Yeah. Just stick with one to begin with. Yeah, so and maybe not 44 um, pieces either. Maybe 12.